Maka's Guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maka here. Welcome to my one hour in-depth preview of Sunset Overdrive. It's gonna be really hard to keep my energy through this entire hour, but I will try my best to explain everything going on screen for you guys in as much detail as is necessary without going overkill on you guys. Um, to start the game, one of the first things you will do is choose your body type as well as you'll be able to choose your facial hair, your hair on your head, the top of your head, you'll be able to choose your face and uh, different attributes of your face like your eye color and uh, hair color as well. That's going to happen for about five minutes in the game right now. I will rejoin you guys once the gameplay starts as this is a pretty in-depth character creator and I did take my time showing each and every option to you guys just in case you were interested and I'll join you back up once we get full control of our character. Now, after we're done customizing the facial features and body type of our character, we'll be granted a loading screen in order to load the free world. We'll also be told that there is a low gore and low vulgarity filter available to us in the menu, which allows for a decrease in kind of like blood and explosions, as well as a decrease in swear words for those who might be interested, although this game is pretty hilarious and I would recommend leaving both of those on. As soon as we start the game, you'll have this very short cinematic in which you are dropped off of this train. That is the character I created, and as you can see, there is some humor telling you that you are totally screwed. As soon as we gain control of our character here, you'll see that one of the first moves we are taught is the dodge roll, which is on the Xbox controller. Obviously, that's the controller we're going to be using as that's the only controller available. Using the X will perform a dodge roll where you can dodge out of the way. And you can also use uh, double A here to vault over. I will have to go into the menu here really quick into the options and invert my controls as I do invert my Y axis and it does not uh, do that for me um, as the default option. Uh, there's those little green uh, health symbols which apply uh, extra health if you need it but I didn't and then uh, hopping up on top of this we'll start a little bit of uh, another cinematic uh, at this point we are taught that we can kind of jump over things we can jump down onto fans and those will help us bounce additionally we can uh, jump on cars that'll help us bounce umbrellas as well and once we get up onto here you can double tap A you can double tap A again to kind of uh, jump and wall grab and then here we're gonna have to get across the street and it'll also be introducing us into kind of the mechanic of bouncing in between uh, areas using the cars available in the game. Now we're introduced into the grind mechanic. You're gonna wanna press A to jump into your grind and then X to start the actual grind. These are all gonna be normal grinds where you do it on top. There's also under grinds, so you can press X and go under the rail as you'll see here really quick. But before that, we're gonna learn how to uh, go backwards on our grinds. If you press the opposite direction that you are currently grinding in and press X, you will be able to change the direction of your grind. We're then instructed to go into our apartment, but this happens instead.
<laughs> okay, that just happened. Now we are given the badass weapon called the Flaming Compensator, which basically looks like a penis. There's no getting around that, and that's on purpose. I thought it was pretty hilarious. Uh, we're just going to have to clear out eight enemies here as part of the tutorial. So you're going to want to aim, and uh, there's some quite a significant amount of auto-aim, as it would be quite difficult to actually have 100% full aim in this game because of how much movement and maneuverability your character has. On top of that, after you do kill 8 OD, this big Herker boss spawns, and you're going to want to just kind of grind near him and around him and shoot him a bunch of times until he dies. I don't believe he has a health bar in the tutorial, although they will have health bars later on in the game. Um, so you can also do undergrinds, as you just saw me do, which is basically when you're grinding on a wire, but you go underneath the wire instead of on top of it. I'll let you guys listen to some of the in-game audio during this mini-boss battle, and I'll rejoin you in about a minute or two.
So after a little bit of the story elements that you just saw, kind of explaining what happened right before and right after the intro, it's now been about two weeks since the introduction of the game, and basically since you are no longer employed because your employer made everyone become a zombie, you can choose any kind of outfit or gear that you want. You can also adjust the hair color, the face attributes, and everything that you did previously. And you can redo that if you so desire, if you're not happy with what you had before. So I decided to change my hair from purple to blue because I thought both of them were equally ridiculous and hilarious. So I just changed that. And then the next thing you're, you can do is kind of do face accessories. You can do sunglasses. Uh, masquerade masks, uh, a whole bunch of options like hats and stuff. These are all kind of the basic options. You do unlock quite a few items as you progress through the game. There's also money currency in the game which can be used to buy additional outfit items and just plain, uh, plain old outfits from some characters in the game once you progress. So although there might not be that many options on screen at the very beginning of the game, there are plenty of options for you to purchase as you make progress through the game, as I mentioned. Um, and there's some crazy things that you'll probably want to check out for yourself once you get the game. I've mentioned this in a previous preview of mine where I took you guys through the character customization, but for those who didn't watch that video, I would recommend you watch it, but I'll re-explain it here uh, and summarize. Basically, for each part of your body, that includes the top half, bottom half of your body, there is an underwear section in which you can pick kind of what goes underneath your shirt. And then you can select the top, and it actually will layer the tops for you. So if you select an undershirt and then put a belly top over it, or a Hawaiian shirt with an opening in the front, as you can see on screen, you will be able to see the undershirt you put on beneath that uh, top clothing layer. Hopefully that makes sense, but basically you can layer your clothing and that also works with underwear. You can wear long johns and then if you wear shorts on top of those long johns, you will see the long johns poke out from underneath the, the shorts. So that's all an option here for you guys. Now I'm going to let you guys just kind of experience this um, character creator without me rambling on about it. I will rejoin you guys at the 15 minute mark.
at this point in the game, we are introduced to Walter, who is the master of badass entrances. Um, there's some humor to be had, obviously, during this tutorial. This is kind of like the second part of the tutorial. The first part was kind of really action-packed and didn't really explain too many things. It just had you play the game. This tutorial will have you actually do certain tasks and it will be giving on-screen instructions for you to complete in order to uh, complete your objective. There are a variety of funny lines during this uh, portion of the game. So I'll let you guys experience some of the jokes for yourself and I'm sure some of them you'll hear uh, during the parts where I stop talking and give you guys the in-game audio. Um, so yeah, I, I recommend that you uh, turn up that volume and you listen in to whatever it is that the characters are saying what, when you play this for the first time. Uh, I actually laughed out loud at some of these parts and I'll let you actually listen in for about a minute or two during this part of the tutorial and then I'll join you back up and explain lots of things as they kind of happen on screen. Um, I'm not going to talk over uh, the actual tutorial which will do a better job at explaining things than I do, so yeah. That dead body over there? That one of them? Hey, dead guy. What am I in for here? Break open that crate. Pick up the gun. Now, switch to your new gun. Uh, how do I do that? That was the test? I fucking nailed it! Wait here. Get ready to shoot some OD. OD? Overcharge drinkers. My partner Floyd says drinking overcharge caused their endocrine systems to go into overdrive. I'm gonna throw some overcharge onto the court. Get ready for the real test. The OD are addicted to that stuff. They'll be here quick. Here they come. Still alive. Good sign. Come on, kid. Hey, where's the cops? The National Guard? The news helicopters? Wake up, kid. Fisco controls everything. Can't we just call for help or something? It's not that easy. Fisco cut off all communications outside the city. But I have a plan. Fizco did this? Not on purpose, but they're doing a hell of a job covering it up. The rest of the world thinks we're all dead from some kind of virus. Come on, we gotta keep moving. So now that Walter has deemed my hilariously dressed and hilarious looking character as qualified for his base, he takes me back to his base and introduces me into some new characters that are a part of his stronghold which is about to happen right now. This guy right next to me on my left, I believe his name is called, his name is Two Hat Jack. Um, and he's basically the weapon master and uh, he'll supply you with ammo as well as new weapons and collectible maps. So you can actually use your overcharge in order to buy maps that will reveal collectibles on the map. The only thing you'll be able to buy from him in the tutorial is called the Dirty Harry, which is a pistol. It is a pretty strong one-shot type of pistol, um, named Dirty Harry, I assume, from the movie, pretty clearly. And then we're going to go upstairs here to talk to Floyd, who is our kind of amp master. I'm going to let you guys listen in again, as this has some good explanations as to some of the mechanics in the game. And I recommend that you just listen to it instead of listening to me talk again. Intruders! You know what you're doing. Who are these guys? Damn. Criminals who will shoot you for no good reason. 
Best way to deal with them? We realize that makes us the scabs of the scabs, right? Just get out there and make sure you grind up high and bounce around. If you stand still, they'll murder you. So here's our first real kind of story-based uh, combat section where you're attacked by a group of scabs, which are the human-based faction in the game that'll uh, try to hunt you down. They're trying to kind of take over the area of Sunset City, and your goal is just to basically protect your base from them and kill them all as fast as possible. Um, and it's recommended that you use grinds and bounces so that they can hit you. After killing all of them, you'll return to Floyd, who is the absent-minded scientist, and then this will happen. I'm gonna head out to the overpass, put the kid to work. Okay, I could use some more supplies. Head on down to the tracks, I'll explain on the way. By myself? Hey, I know there's some scary shit out there, but it's all in how you look at it. You tell yourself you're gonna have a good time, you'll have a good time. Am I right? But seriously, those motherfucking OD will tear you apart, be careful. Now we were granted with our first mission in the game, Floyd needs us to go to a special part of town or to pick up some supplies so that he can make a vat which will allow him to make amps for us in the future. So as you can see on screen there is an indicator as to where my mission objective is um, and there's a whole bunch of enemies on the way but I'll try to just grind past them and avoid conflict as it's a lot safer that way. And my objective is really, really far away, so if I actually tried to kill every individual enemy, I'd probably have a hard time doing that, and it would take me a very long time. As you can see on the grind rail, you can grind at a normal speed, which you do by just attaching yourself to the grind rail pressing X. You can use LT in order to aim and slow yourself down, or you can also unlock a feature which allows you to go faster on that rail. Uh, by tapping RB, the bumper, you are able to speed up your grinds, and I believe that's actually showed right now. Also, while grinding, you can press B in order to melee while on a grind rail. So that's what you see me doing right here and what I do in order to open up some of the boxes. Additionally, we're told that, like in every game, uh, red, ex red barrels are explosive barrels and they can be used in order to create explosions. The game does this in a quite funny way and uh, it's obviously very self-aware that it's a video game through its commentary. Um, and once we make our way to the second site of uh, parts, we're introduced to a new type of enemy called a popper. So now that we've gotten all 10 VAT parts that were needed, we can make our way back to Floyd. We can do so through a variety of traversal moves, basically getting there whichever way we deem fit. I'm just going to take some grind rails here around the backside and make my way towards the base, uh, kind of around the back. This is a new area that we haven't seen quite yet, uh, very accessible from the beginning of the game as it's quite close to your base. Coming up here, you can grind up, and there's a gas station, uh, which has some unique features as well. Uh, you can also do challenges in the area, but we'll be leaving those for later. And I also recommend that you watch my preview of the challenges in the game, which is a separate video entirely, and explains all the different challenges uh, in about 10 minutes. Now that we talked to Floyd, this happens. some things I call amps. I have some that are almost ready. I just need a few more things to finish them off. There should be some fizzy balloons out in the base. Grab them and bring them back. So this is more or less our second main mission and this kind of explains the amp mechanic 
Although it wasn't explained in the game, uh, an amp is basically just a power-up that you can attach to a gun once you level it. And in order to purchase amps and have them produced by Floyd, you're going to need to collect collectibles in the area. Certain types of collectibles can be used for certain types of things. And I believe that's what is explained right now when you talk to Floyd. He'll talk about some of the different collectible types in the game, as well as how they're created and what you'll need in order to create them. There's over 700 collectibles available. And as I said previously, you can buy maps in order to help you find them as you progress through the game using your overcharge uh, currency. After turning in the parts for this mission, you'll be introduced into the AMP tutorial, which I'll let you listen into now. Because you need to learn some shit, and studies have shown this is the best way. You equip AMPs on the character tab. There are different categories of AMPs. Select the Hero AMP slot to equip your new Hero AMP. Equip your Hero AMP. Now you're amplified! Bam! Now, let's do your weapon amp. Select the weapon you want to amplify. Choose a weapon amp to equip to the weapon. Now, go kick some ass! Huh. I don't feel any different. Oh yeah, amps only activate when you fight with style. This is the style meter, it's your best friend. Use traversal combinations to fill your style meter. Bounce, grind, and swing. Stay on the move. Killing enemies while grinding, bouncing, and doing acrobatics also creates style. You need practice. Go to the parking lot and activate your first amp. Bounce on cars and grind on wires until you reach style level one. Select the high fidelity. Weapon amps will only be equipped on level two. Get on the ground and roll into enemies. So now that we've been introduced to amps a little bit, we've equipped one to our character as well as one to our weapon. Uh, after filling up the first bar of our style meter in the top right corner, we will have unlocked the uh, dodge roll kind of amp that we've equipped earlier. So now that I can, uh, whenever I dodge roll, it has this kind of blue lightning come uh, around me, which will knock over enemies and hurt them drastically. Now from here on out, I'm going to have to get back onto the grind rails and kill a few people in order to get up to style level 2, which is when I begin to unlock some of my uh, other amps. In this case, it's an amp for my gun, which uh, stuns a whole bunch of people. Whoever get hit by it, uh, they'll be stunned um, from my gun. So now that I'm in style level 2, more or less, once I start using my high fidelity gun, which is the gun that has the amp equipped, you'll notice that whenever I hit an enemy, that enemy will kind of glow blue, and they'll become stunned. And as part of our main objective here, I'm going to have to stun a total of 15 people. Uh, in order to kind of progress through the rest of this tutorial level. Again, the tutorial is quite long. There's quite a few different things you're going to need to learn in order to be able to play, in order to be able to play this game correctly, um, which is why there's a decent amount of tutorial. But the tutorial is put together in a uh, good fashion. You learn a lot and you get accustomed to the game very, very quickly, especially with some of the traversal moves in this beginning area. Um, they're designed, all the rails and stuff is, all the rails and things are designed in order to kind of be, uh, friendly to new users as well as exciting to new users. Um, I've also unlocked one of my first achievements for getting what I think is a hundred grind kills, although I'm not sure I would have to double check with that. Uh, now that I've completed the eight dodge roll kills as well as the 15 stun kills, I just have to clear out the remainder of the enemies in order to progress through the rest of the mission. There is a mini map in the bottom left of my screen, although it's now disappeared, that will show enemies in the area and help you kill them. It is uh, further explaining what style level 3 and maximum style level kind of does for you. Um, that's going to be more necessary for you once you start getting better amps and better uh, stuff to unlock and you start getting better at some of the traversal moves. 
uh, that's when some of those aspects come into play. And I will actually uh, go into in-game audio for just about a minute here, and then I'll join you back up very shortly. And traversal combo. The higher your combo counter, the faster you build up style. Kick ass! You're on your own now. Don't fuck it up. Yeah! What? Now that's fighting with style. Come on back. I got some good news. This is gonna be fun. When this stuff is cooked, I'll have an amp ready for you. The reason we're cooking this shit is to make new amps. Trust me, you want amps. Now remember, soon as this shit starts cooking, those OD'd are gonna come running. Most important thing, keep those motherfuckers away from the bats. If you fail, don't worry. This is the awesome apocalypse. You always get a do-over. I set up some barricades and traps around the base, but those won't hold for long. Get out there and keep those OD from getting into the base. Now, before we continue on with the rest of the video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Loot Crate, an epic geek and gamer monthly subscription service starting at just $13.37 a month, plus shipping and handling available in the US, Canada, Australia, and the UK. Using the coupon code LOOTSCREEN and the link in the description, you can save 10%. It also helps with the channel, so it's a win-win situation. So check it out if you have the time and maybe it's something for you. So now that we've gotten all the ingredients necessary and kind of fulfilled all the necessary requirements in order to start an amp uh, process, uh, we're going to have to do the last step, which is turning the vat. Turning the vat will also make it nighttime as amps can only be cooked at nighttime due to UV light from what I understand the game tells you. And uh, during this section of the game, what you're going to basically need to do is defend your base from all the OD that are trying to get in to get to your vat because your vat is filled with overdrive. Uh, you're going to have to defend your base in order to allow the amp to be cooked fully. And then once it reaches its prime, the mission is over. So it's basically a fort defense mission um, with a whole bunch of gates and stuff. This mechanic becomes much more complex as you get through the game and you begin to unlock um, new equipment and, and stuff you can uh, equip around your base in order to make this uh, much more dynamic type of mission. So this is the easiest one available in the game. It's also the first one you ever come across, which kind of explains uh, some of the things uh, about why it's uh, one of the easier ones. There's also traps on the ground. I just passed by a trap. Uh, you can't place traps in this mission, although traps are available uh, later on in the game. If you watch Sunset TV, Traps are explained in Sunset TV the week of uh, the 16th of October, I believe, is when it released. And that's a mechanic that is uh, put in later in the game. So as you can see, there's a three minute timer on the top of the screen. And that's basically how long you're going to have to defend your base from all the different OD types. If for whatever reason they do get in and they destroy your vat, your amp's not made and you're going to have to restart. Um, so yeah. This is something that happens occasionally in the game when you get a lot of different types of collectibles and you try to craft amps. This is a necessary uh, part of the game where you'll need to defend your vat from the OD. There's another two and a half minutes which I will let you experience for the most part without my commentary starting now. Big 
So if you're following along with the gameplay, you have probably noticed that there is a huge boss on my screen. Theoretically speaking, you don't even have to take him out as long as you can survive and your vat survives and all your gates survive for the remainder of the cooking time that is required. You don't actually have to take these bosses out. However, they are really strong. They will hit you with rocks, so they are a nuisance because they can get in the way a lot of your movement as well as other things. Additionally, they are strong enough to break down gates and barricades, which will allow some of the smaller OD to get into your base. Another thing that's mentioned in the game uh, is how you can use different weapons in combination in order to deal massive damage. So against the Herker, which is a boss type enemy, it is quite strong, takes a lot of bullets uh, to kill. You can use your flaming compensator in order to light it on fire, and then you can switch to your Dirty Harry pistol and hit it with your Dirty Harry in order to deal more damage than it normally would deal. These weapons work in combination with each other. There is also the high fidelity, high fidelity gun which shoots the discs that you had previously seen and that has my amp on it which would stun enemies. Ideally, since I don't use it too much in this mission, I probably should have switched it out for a different weapon. However, it's only allowed to be put on level 2 weapons and I'm not sure if any of my uh, weapons had been leveled up enough to uh, uh, do this. So now that the timer re reached zero, we have successfully accomplished our mission. Uh, the VAT will create our amp and it will kill all the enemies in the area so we don't have to worry about killing the remainder of the enemies. Which is why, if you so desire, you can actually leave that gigantic Herker boss untouched and he will die from that explosion. So now that the amp has been made, you're going to want to pick it up from the VAT to the right of Floyd. I'm going to do that and I believe there is a small cinematic which I will let you enjoy right now. It'll explain a whole bunch of things about amps. Okay, some amps I can cook up quick. You just gotta bring me the ingredients and I can give you the amp right away. Just go to the amp chamber and drop off the ingredients to get your amp. You'll find amp ingredients all over the city. Here's your shopping list. Busy balloons are filled with hydrogen fluoride, a super acid to help kickstart the reactants. Smelly ass shoes are a potent source of sulfur dioxide. Camera lenses can help isolate the extremophiles. Neon signs can give me some radically ionized particles good for organic conduction. Pranksters TP'd the city. Stupid, but works in our favor. Toilet paper is the perfect catalytic substrate. If you're having trouble finding any of this stuff, Two Hat Jack sells maps with their location. Some amps need a little more time to cook. You'll have to defend the vats while we make those. I'll call you and let you know when I need your help to protect the vats. Be sure to equip those amps and let me know how you like them. So now that I've completed the mission and obviously unlocked some amps, it would probably be a wise decision for me to equip them, which is what you see me doing here. Unfortunately, I only have one hero amp. You're allowed to equip a total of two, and I have no dive bomb amps as those are equipped later on in the game. There are also these, uh, what are these, overdrives, which are unlocked through badges, but that doesn't happen until later on in the game. Uh, the, the screen is available for you to look through with the options about it, but you can't really do anything with it until later. Now, if you come down these stairs from the base, you'll notice that there is this blue kind of uh, check mark, or rather an exclamation mark. And as you'll notice, um, there are green uh, icons on your map. Those are challenges. There are yellow icons, which are going to be your main mission. And there are also blue icons, which are basically quests. Uh, each quest is kind of related to a specific character. In this case, there's a quest and it's Floyd's quest. And what he's going to ask you to do is take out a total of six of these kind of cameras or cleaning machines. And he basically said that if you can take out all six, you'll complete the quest, get some money, and it'll also help you uh, brew uh, equipment easier or faster or whatever. So you can collect six of these, they will show up on your map as you smash one, the next one will show up on your map. However, I don't uh, actually go through all six, I end up skipping it for a bit. Here's a traversal challenge, I made a video covering all the challenges, so I won't be doing that, I will just wait to do that later. 
Uh, as I said, you can continue forward. As you see, there's only one mission marker on my screen, and that is for uh, the cleaners. I'm going to do my second cleaner, and then I'm going to go into the mission menu and select the main mission, uh, as I don't want to waste too much time looking at some of the extras available in the game. I want to focus on the main missions that are more important and, to be frank, a lot more entertaining. So here's where you see me pull up my menu and change my main mission objective. I don't want to do the brewery upgrade anymore, so I'm going to set my primary mission as the mission named A Way Out. That is the main mission that the game probably wants me to complete. And it'll show me my new objective markers, which I will go there. From what I remember, I do have to meet Walter on an overpass, which is where I'm going right now. This mission is quite difficult uh, in my opinion and it is actually quite difficult to get to the location that the game wants you to get to especially with some of the uh, easier traversal moves that you know at the beginning of the game. Uh, getting to these areas is a lot easier once you unlock some extra moves that are uh, gained later on in the game. Um, some of them that have been already shown through some of the marketing material are the air dash which allows you to dash through the air. You can also do an undergrind rail jump, which allows you to get more air, wall running, and stuff like that. That does make traversal easier for you. So now that I'm finally getting to the right area that I, I should be getting to uh, via a whole bunch of buildings and wall running and whatnot here, um, I'm taking my time because uh, I was a little bit confused, but there we go. I found a good little balcony to jump off of and uh, help me get up onto the overpass to start the next mission. What we're going to have to do is help Walter defend the overpass from all the scabs. I'll let you listen into some of the in-game audio. I do believe I take quite a bit of damage as I wasn't really sure what I was doing. But luckily if you die in a mission you do respawn back at the beginning of the mission so no harm no foul. If you die you get another chance at it. There's not really a lot of uh, penalty to dying other than having to redo the process again. If you die in the open world, it works more like a respawn system where it'll actively respawn you back into the same scenario that you were at. So dying in the open world has far less consequences than dying in a mission, so that should also be noted. I'll leave you with some in-game audio. I will be dying very shortly in the game, and uh, additionally after that you'll see some extra stuff, and I'll join you back uh, after a cinematic or two. Best way to survive. Over 
here, kid. What is that? It's a glider. Once I'm over the walls, I'm gonna expose Fizco's lies and make them pay for what they've done. You really think it'll fly? I know it will. As soon as I make a few more adjustments to the launch mechanism. Wrench. Okay, I need you to lift up the carriage a bit more. Like this? Now keep it there while I tighten this. Don't let go. I uh, might have to let go. Not yet. I to let go now. Go! Yeah, did you see that? You're lucky I was here. Thanks, Dad, who's not my real dad. Huh. What's that? So, after that mission, you are respawned into the open world and you are shown these photo booths. Photo booths are kind of the gateway into the multiplayer aspect of Sunset Overdrive. They are uh, allow access to Chaos Mode, which is the name of the multiplayer aspect. Uh, as I was previewing this in the middle of October, Chaos Mode is not available. Chaos Mode will be available for reviewers as me to preview later on in October, and I will be covering that through video footage closer to the release date of the final game, probably somewhere between the 23rd and 26th of October. You should be able to find some content regarding the online multiplayer aspects of this game. Uh, again, once the servers are up and I uh, coordinate some times in order to play with other reviewers, uh, that'll be available. So now that the mission was over and it didn't really go as planned because of various aspects, um, we're respawned and we're also told that there is a fast travel menu. You can fast travel to select locations on the map. Um, as an example here on screen, you can see that I will be fast traveling to our main base that we've been at a few times before. There are a good variety of fast travel locations available in the world. Although you can't fast travel quite anywhere, you will still have to traverse to exactly where you're going. So keep that in mind. Now that we've made our way back to Floyd, we'll have a short conversation with him about how uh, we can fix our problem with Walter. And I'll let you listen in uh, to that conversation. At the end of every mission, you are given a mission success screen. Here you go. Don't worry, man. He's been pissed at me plenty of times. It's not like I did it on purpose. I want to get out of this city just as much as he does. Hey, let's make lemons out of this lemonade. He's got to rebuild, right? Hardest part is going to be the propeller. Why don't you head over to the old factory district, have a look around. I need to find a propeller. The propeller has blades. Guess I'll start at the old Crown Blades factory. Yeah. Hey, as long as you're out there, try getting some combos and building up style. Use those amps. Trust me, amps can make or break you out there. So as you learned in the cinematic that you just watched, you are making your way down to a specific part of town in order to try to find a propeller for Walter in order to make him happy considering that you blew up his plane by accident, although it was kind of your fault. Floyd tells you to go to this location and on the way there you are introduced into a new traversal move, which is the big jump from an undergrind. As you are under 
on an undergrind, you can tap X, which should transfer you to an overgrind. Uh, but if you quickly tap A after an undergrind uh, while transitioning into an overgrind, you can get additional air on your jump, which is very uh, useful for maneuverability and uh, traversing. You can get a lot of extra height on your jumps, and uh, that'll let you clear a lot more uh, distance. In this little area of the game, you are taught uh, how you can use bars in order to traverse. So as you see on screen here, I'll be using uh, the X button in order to do that little flip off of a bar. So you're going to jump into a bar, and then after you jump into the bar, as you're approaching it, you're going to tap X to do a swing, and you can do multiple swings in the same series of jumps. As you land on this platform, there are two enemies, so I've decided just to explode the red barrel and take care of them. Here there's a quick grind and then you can transition your grind into one of those little flips and continue your grind over to this area. At this point you are chasing this character which you found in the area and you don't really know why you're chasing him but you are. I think you just need want to talk to him about uh, whether or not he, he's seen a propeller in the area. And then he'll actually run into the room. I almost caught him. But he ran into the room and locked himself in, and uh, as soon as that happens, you basically just have to fend for yourself and try to clear out as many of these OD as possible. And then once you clear them out, you're actually able to open the gate and confront that guy who locked himself in there. His name is Sam, he works for a faction, or he's a part of a faction, and he was actually in the area to try to find some supplies and you'll have a short conversation with him as you open the door in a few seconds here. I'll let you listen into the conversation so you don't miss too much of the story. Wow, that was amazing. Are you like a superhero or something? What? It's just the way you move, the, the things you do. Well, uh, good luck, kid. My name's Sam, but since you saved me and all, let me do something for you. Nah, not unless you know where I can find a propeller. A propeller? Wait, wait, I have an idea. Oh, this is gonna be perfect. Follow me! We gotta get out of here. Follow me! So here we're introduced to a new type of enemy called the blower which adds a pretty interesting dynamic into the game. The reason this is, is as you can see the enemy does shoot green goo at you which isn't all that special on its own, however it does anticipate your movement and if you're on a grind rail as you just saw me there, he will anticipate where you are grinding towards and he'll use his slime in order to coat the grind rail in his slime and that'll actually damage you as you're grinding. So if you don't take out these enemies fast, you will have a problem grinding on certain rails and they'll try to take you off of your rails by covering them in green goo. So you're going to want to focus your attention on them or uh, at the bare minimum, you're going to have to try to avoid their green goo. Um, You can see when their attack is incoming via some red circles that will show up on the grind rail or on the surface that they're about to hit. So that's what you're going to want to keep an eye out for as well as the obvious visual clue of the green goo actually following you and coming to your grind rail. Um, here comes a part of the mission where there's a whole bunch of enemies coming from each and every direction of, uh, of the area. And you're going to want to take out these enemies as you would in any other game. Uh, taking them out will cue a new cutscene as well as a new weapon. So just pay attention to what Sam's doing and saying and he'll lead you to where you gotta go. So now that we're in this area, we're just gonna come up this ladder and through this quick hallway. As part of the progression of this level, you're gonna want to take out the enemies in order for him to be able to, con to continue a little bit forward with you. And uh, yeah. That's about it for this uh, part, and you'll come into a courtyard where you need to take out a few more enemies. And this is actually a quite difficult section of the game, at least in my opinion, although you may prove me wrong and find it very easy. Um, I will let you listen to some in-game audio of this part of the game right now. No. Oh! 
Okay, we're just going in circles. Uh, think, Sam, think. Here's the plan. Railjack that train. That's brilliant! And how lucky that you can drive a train! What? I can't drive a train. Then why would you even suggest stealing a train? Because we are about to die. Well, in that case, I have played several hundred hours with YouTube Simulator. That sounds boring and awful. Look, potentially life-saving. They're breaking through that barricade! Look, here they come! Now we're really gonna die! Tornadoes? The tornadoes of death? Let's clear! Let's get out of here. Put on your big boy pants and follow me. I'll see if I can get the train started. You check the train for supplies. So now that we've made our way back towards the train depot that we were previously at, since, you know, Sam has a lot of uh, experience in a train simulator game, he thinks he could get the train started. Uh, on our way back, we notice that there's this container and we're going to open it. And inside we find teddy bears, dynamite, and fire extinguishers. And our character decides that he is going to make a weapon out of these and he's gonna call it the TN, Teddy. This is a teddy bear launcher which launches explosive teddy bears and as you can see they do some pretty massive damage on screen and you'll actually notice if you look very very closely at the explosions they cause they are actually in the shape of a teddy bear's head. So that's quite subtle but it is there and I thought it was pretty awesome. Uh, you'll want to note that, and what you're going to need to do here is take out as many of the enemies, or actually all of the enemies, uh, until Sam can get the train started, and then once he gets the train started, you're going to actually have to hop on the train and uh, ride on top of it with him for a few seconds, and uh, then he'll escort you to his base, where he'll introduce you to some of his friends and uh, whatnot, and the story does continue on from there. Um, you'll spend a good amount of time at Sam's base um, during the beginning part of the game. Uh, it, uh, of the first two hours, you spend about an hour there, so that should give you some indication as to the importance of the upcoming base um, within the story and the progression of the game. Um, so as you can see, I'm just using the grind rails, undergrinds, overgrinds, big jumps, bounces, and whatnot. And I'm using my TNT Teddy ammo to try to take out all of these enemies as well as possible. I am taking quite a bit of damage as I am new to the game, but as you kill enemies, some of them also do drop uh, health pickups, which will help you regenerate your health. Now that Sam's finally fixed the train, you're going to want to head to it and then jump on top of it. I'll let you enjoy the rest of the video without any of my commentary, however I do ask that if you enjoyed the video, found it entertaining, informational or useful, or you just enjoyed watching any of it, I would really uh, be appreciative of a like on the video, possibly subscribing to my YouTube channel for more content. You can also check me out on Twitch, I have the same name on Twitch as I do on YouTube. And there's links on my page for that. You can check me out on there. I do stream new games occasionally before their launch whenever I get the chance to. And I will most likely be streaming a lot of Halo, the Master Chief Collection, in the future. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in one of my future videos. As always, I peace. You drove the shit out of it. I saved us. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Come on. Our safe house is just down the street. So, Sam, what were you doing at that factory all by yourself? 
Well, you know, looking for supplies for me and my friends. They send me out because they're all doing other important stuff back at the base. Important stuff? Like what? I'm not really sure. If these friends of yours, are they really friends? I like to think so. We were all students at Oxford West College. Oxford West? Isn't that the school that all the rich and famous send their kids to when they have to go into rehab or whatever? Yeah, but it's a great school. I got a scholarship. The only scholarship. <laughs> Everybody else paid their way in. Anyway, when the OD attacked campus, only a few of us made it out alive. One thing before we go in. My friends are having a hard time coping, so go easy on them. If we can get everyone working together, we're gonna make you an amazing propeller. Hey guys, I want you to meet my new friend. Shut up, Sam. You suck at friends, Sam. They're not bad people, they're just spoiled. They don't know how to deal with a mutant apocalypse. I know how to make them come around. If only I could get them to listen to me. Maybe you can help me help them. You want me to be your life coach? Yes. What should I do first, coach? Step one, never call me coach again. Step two, never do that again. Step three, let's see what your friends need to get upright and start working on that propeller.